Um, the third post is in a sense both nomadic uh, when it comes to how people um, sort of found their place. So there were no regularities in, in where you would settle down. You would sort of go by the wind and the and the and the and the country and thrust your your river rent, if you will, <laughs> into the into the flesh of the ground and just like take the swamps and, and, and make them as a as a shelter. But it's also um, very nomadic through time because it always has to be maintained and if for example because of a volcanic eruption or something uh, the winds prevailing winds changed or the weather changed then people actually sort of move their houses a little bit according to that and also by the fact that if I mean we had really bad periods and then better periods and in bad periods you would almost like with nomadic tents just you know let some of the rooms uh, deter and then in better times you would build uh, new buildings so in a sense it's not only spatially nomadic but it also becomes very temporally nomadic and um, I think that's one of the um, one of the sort of main things that that we take with us as a as a cultural heritage and is in a sense also presented in in modern buildings if you will especially out in the country in the rural sort of setting that people will sort of you know always add on to or lay down and uh, be really open to to change but also to the fact that we after we stopped building the turf houses it was a shameful heritage after we got our uh, sovereignty in the middle of the 20th century but still people would build I mean because we had very limited resources then if the co-op on the place had access to corrugated iron then you would just buy corrugated iron and do whatever you could with that or there was driftwood then you would just use the driftwood so in a sense there is this notion of always just using whatever material you could get and be very reflective and very responsive to whatever conditions you would have around you so in a sense it's it's, it's sort of spatio temporally uh, nomadic if you will mm -hmm. and um when we became sovereign, then we sort of really wanted to be like like the big nations around us and, and built in modernist uh, sort of fashion. The, the other thing is that, in a sense, uh, concrete has also becomes like this um, local material because we have the sand and then we would just either produce or import cement to, to make these houses. Now, the houses that people would live in would become quite modernistic and you would almost have like there was this architectural agency of the agricultural ministry that would just like make steps so they all look the same but the turf houses became more like uh, houses for the animals so they sort of deterred and became you know where people kept the animals during the winter time and things like that but I think that uh, still we have this tradition of add-ons and we have uh, in a sense the, the concrete has almost taken on the, the role of the turf as this malleable because I mean we're such a small market that all the houses are uh, casted at place in place so um, so in a sense you have this possibility of, of, of uh, module and, and, and sort of almost it becomes almost like a malleable uh, uh, material if you will so in a sense I think that this nomadic tradition has followed us and what we are trying to do is not necessarily just um, redo the turf house as it was, but try to understand um, what are the qualities, also social qualities. Um, like I was talking about in my lecture, before people would have to use the turf houses as public uh, spaces as well, because there were no hotels, there were no road systems, there were no inns. So people would have to take strangers, sort of wandering strangers, into their beds. And that is still in the case, uh, I made this uh, research among my students and found out that I asked them about the generation of their grandparents, if they were alive, the generation of their parents, and then their generation. And it turns out that even the generation of the students, many of the houses still have spaces where they can accommodate people, not strangers now, but still people who, who come from the country, who their, their siblings who are studying abroad. So we still have this social structure from that uh, era that we have to accommodate each other. So there are elements like this that we are also trying to learn from the turf house. I mean, both the multi-species um, 
sort of communion that we share with the with the turf as, as being just one of the of a large chain of, of animals and and uh, sort of critters that live there, but also in a sense how the community is still shaping the way we live. So the commons is is very relevant still in the Icelandic context. Even the interesting thing, for example, in the parents' generation, people would say that maybe houses of 200 square meters, even though all the children were, you know, going away, because of social structures in a, is in a sense, um, it's not unusual for people back home to have many um, uh, marriages or, or relationships. So you have maybe one child from the first relationship and two in the second, and then you get the worst. So the generation of the parents actually sit in huge uh, buildings, only two of them, to be able to take their children and grandchildren home, you know, between uh, between homes, if you will. So, so like I said, I mean, it's it's it is still a multi generational. Um, at least there is this heritage that, that people still accommodate for, even though they. I'm not sure whether they would sort of uh, recognize it themselves, but it's so bound in the heritage of how we have to live together. But also, I mean, 200,000, or no, sort of 350,000 people on 100,000 square meters, it's huge. So with the distances and everything, that's, I mean, that's just a necessary thing.